everybody. Welcome to story time. As per usual, I'm so excited to be here with you guys, but I feel like it's been like a minute <laughs> since I've done this. So bear with me if it gets a little weird, okay? <laughs> we are going to start the way we always do. We are going to sing our hello song, but also my name's Ellie, in case anyone doesn't know. So if you're ready for this hello song. If you know it, please feel free to sing along. If you don't know it, you can dance along or make up your own words or really whatever you want. We don't really have rules here if you didn't notice. <laughs> okay, so let's see if our ukulele is ready. Sounds good to me. Here we go. guys. All right. Now that we've gotten our hellos warmed up, we have another hello to do. We are going to do some bread and butter. So follow along with me. Get your hands all ready. And here we go. Bread and butter, marmalade and jam. Let's say hello as fast as we can. Ha! That was really fast. Can you do it again? Wow, that was even too fast for me. Now we will go slow. Here we go. Bread and butter, marmalade and jam. Let's say hello as slow as we can. Hello. That was also pretty slow. All right, now let's see, what do we have to do next? It's been a minute since I did this. What do you guys think? We did fast, we did slow. What about, hi! I think we should do hi. Here we go. Bread and butter, marmalade and jam. Let's say hello as high as we can. Next is low, bread and butter, marmalade and jam. Let's say hello as low as we can. Hello, hello floor, hello, hello, hello. Very nice. All right, next up we have, how about, really, really loud, ready? Bread and butter, marmalade and jam. Let's say hello as loud as we can. Hello! hello, hello. Mm, that was really loud. Good job. Now for our very last one to make up for being so, 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 so loud. We are going to be quiet as a mouse. As quiet as can be. Ready? Hardly make a noise. Ready? Very good job, you guys. All right, now that we got our hellos done, what updates do I have for you guys? Hmm, well, it's December now, so it's getting cold out there, but you guys would not believe what I saw my neighbors doing. My neighbor is teaching his dog how to skateboard. It's incredible. It's the most incredible thing I've ever seen. The dog is so good. 
every single day they go outside on the street and we'll just go a little bit further on the skateboard and that dog skateboards way better than I do. Which I guess isn't saying a lot, but <laughs> it's very impressive. So I think that's all I have. So I think it's time to figure out what our stories are about today. So we have our mailbox here and we are going to sing our ABCs to open our mailbox. Ready? <clears throat> A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, and Z. Now I know my ABCs. Next time won't you sing with me? I wonder what letter got mailed to me. Let's open up our mailbox so we can see. All right, let's see what, ooh, oh you guys. We have the letter E. It's so hard to see on my wall. We have the letter E, which what words do we know that start with the letter E? I know a very good one, which is Ellie, my name. My name starts with the letter E. So does elephant and electricity and elastic and exciting and the word our stories are about today. Eggs! Eggs exciting. Excellent. See what I did there? <laughs> okay, we have egg stories today, you guys, before I spiral out of control. Oh, my earbud fell out. Ooh. Egg stories. <laughs> so, the first story I have for us, I'm going to get nice and close. It's called Pizonka Lays an Egg. And this one is a beautiful book with beautiful illustrations. It's all about a chicken. All right. Maud laid one egg every day. Dora laid an egg every other day. Nadine always laid exactly five eggs a week. Gloria never laid an egg because he turned out to be a rooster. It was his job to crow and he did it very well. All the other chickens laid eggs regularly. All of them except for P. Zonka. Why doesn't P. Zonka lay any eggs? asked Maud. Because she wanders around the farmyard day in and day out, staring at the flowers and gawking at the clouds, said Nadine. Oh, tut, tut, clucked Dora. She's just a dreamer. Cock-a-doodle-doo, said Gloria. Peasonka paid no attention to them. She looked down at the shiny green grass and gazed up at the deep blue sky. <sighs> I'm quite good at laying eggs, Nadine said to Pizonka one day. You never even give it a try. Look around, Nadine, said Pizonka. Look at those big red tulips and those little pink cherry blossoms. Day after day, Nadine, Dora, and Maud, and all the other hens filled baskets of eggs. Pizonka didn't lay a single egg. Why, asked Maud. Please tell us why, said Dora. Why indeed, clucked Nadine. Cock-a-doodle-doo, said Gloria. <laughs> I will tell you why, said Pizonka. Because of the pale mornings, the soft dark moss, the stripes on the crocuses, the orange cat with one blue eye, the shining center of a dandelion on the sky at midnight, I don't get it, said Maud. Pizonka is just plain lazy, said Nadine. Come on, Pizonka, urged Dora. You might like laying an egg. cock a doodle do Can't you at least try? They all asked. P 
Pizanka thought for a moment. She climbed slowly onto an empty nest. Maud let out a nervous cackle. She'll never be able to do it, said Nadine. Oh my, said Gloria. Pizanka fluffed all of her feathers and flapped her wings. She clucked softly to herself and sat down. Flutter, flutter, cluck, cluck. Nothing happened. Pizanka did it all again. Flutter, flutter, cluck, cluck. Push! At last! Pizanka stood up and looked at her egg. It wasn't white. It wasn't a white egg. It wasn't a brown egg. Or even a gray-blue egg. It was... <gasps> it was spectacular! There were patterns of sun yellow, grass green, tulip red. There were blues as bright as the day and blues as dark as midnight. Oh my goodness, cried Maud. My stars, marveled Dora. But is it a little too much? asked Nadine. Cock a doodle doo! This egg is beautiful! And they all agreed. After that, Pizanka went back to wandering around the farmyard. She looked down and she gazed up. She clucked in wonder at all the colors she saw. She didn't lay very many eggs. But the ones she laid were worth the wait. The end. Very good listening. That is Pizanka lays an egg. I think my favorite in that is Pizanka. Not a fan of Nadine. Just kidding. Nadine's fine, but Pizanka's the best. <laughs> All right. Very good listening, you guys. For our next little thing we're doing, it is not about eggs. <laughs> Spoiler alert. This is our little break in between stories. We are going to do something with these carrots. But first, we need to count to see how many carrots there are. Ready? One two, three, four, five, six. We have six carrots over here. That is six crunchy carrots. So we have a little rhyme. Ready? Here we go. We have six crunchy carrots. Sweet as honey from the hive. Along came a pig. And he ate one. And now we just have how many? We took away one. And now there's five. Ready? One, two, three, four, five. Ready? Five crunchy carrots scratch at the door. Along comes a pig. Ready? And now there's just four. Uh-oh. Now we have four crunchy carrots. Ready? Four crunchy carrots. A treat for you and me. Along came our pig. Ready? And now there's just, if we had four, we take away one. Three, uh-oh, ready? Three crunchy carrots, what can we do? Along comes a pig, oh, no, 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 no. And then there's just two. Should we count them? Let's do it. One, two, very good. Ready? Two crunchy carrots, a knock on the door. Along comes pig. And now there's one more. Just one lonely carrot. Hmm. One crunchy carrot. <gasps> Broken in two. A piece for me and a piece for you. Good job. That pig must have been hungry. He ate a lot of carrots. That's okay. He's probably has fantastic eyesight or something. I don't know. All right. 
we have another story. We, this story, I guess, is called The Most Wonderful Egg in the World. So, once upon a time, I'm going to get this a little bit closer to me. Once upon a time, there were three hens who were arguing who was the most beautiful. First, there was Dottie, and Dottie had beautiful feathers. Next was Stocky, who had the longest legs. And then there was Plumy, who had a beautiful crest. Now, Dottie, Stocky, and Plumy, all, all day long, all they did was argue. And finally, they were so tired of arguing that they said, oh, I have had it. We are going to figure this out once and for all. We are going to go to the queen and the queen will decide who among us is the most beautiful. So they all marched and clucked to the queen's house. And when they got there, they asked the queen to tell them who the most beautiful among them is. And the queen looked at them. The queen looked at Dottie with her beautiful hair and stocky with the long log legs and plumy with all the polka dotted feathers. And the queen looked at them and said, you know what? It is not about what you look like. What is more important is what you do. And what hens do best is lay eggs. So each of you are to lay an egg and we will see which among you is the best. So first up was Dottie. Dottie went home and had, she, you know, did her hair feathers and she sat and she concentrated really hard and <gasps> pluck, she laid the most beautiful white egg. This egg was as white as snow. There was not one spot on it. Next up was Stocky. And Stocky concentrated so hard and pop! It was a giant egg. The whole crowd oohed and awed between the most beautiful white egg and the biggest egg, they said, oh no, both of these eggs are perfect and unique in their own way. Poor, poor Plumy. What is Plumy going to do? How could Plumy even compete? We have a perfect white egg and a giant, giant egg. Even ostriches are jealous of this egg. All right, let's see what she has. And Plumy went, and the crowd gasped in awe for Plumy did not have a white egg nor a big egg or even a round egg. Plumy's egg was huh, not round at all. It was a cube of all sorts of colors. All three hens took their eggs up to the queen and they said, queen, who is the best? Who is the most beautiful with the best eggs? It's time for you to decide. And the queen looked at all of these eggs and she said, hmm, well, this egg is the most white and flawless egg, not a spot on it. This egg is big enough to put all other eggs to shame. And this egg is unique enough and colorful enough and beautiful. Now, I can't choose between these eggs. Instead, I think each and every one of you is perfect and the best chicken. So much, in fact, I will crown each of you to be princesses to lay royal eggs for me, the queen. And all three friends laid their beautiful, unique eggs 
for the rest of their days. The end. Very good listening, you guys. You guys are always so good. All right, we'll put this away. And now we are going to do some, let's do some last night, why don't we? To kind of break up our stories. So get your thumbs all ready. Here we go. Last night and the night before, a lemon and a pickle came knocking at my door. I went downstairs to let them in and they threw me in the garbage bin. Ah! Ew! I don't want to go to the garbage bin. P.U. Ready? Last night and the night before, a chocolate chip came knocking at my door. I went downstairs to let it in and it threw me in the cookie tin. Oh, people don't belong in cookie tins. Though, not as gross as the garbage bin, I will admit. Very good. Let's see, what should be knocking at our door for this last one? How about some chickens? Ready? Last night and the night before, a bunch of chickens came knocking at my door, but I didn't go down to let them in. I fell asleep with a great big grin. Wake up! We still have one more story. We cannot take naps, even though that sounds delightful. <laughs> no naps right now, though, because we have one more story called An Extraordinary Egg. So, uh, I'm gonna, oh, there we go. So, once upon a time, there was a pond. Oh, there it is. And at this pond, there lived three frogs. There was August and Marilyn and Jessica. Now, August, Marilyn, and Jessica all love to swim, but Jessica was the most adventurous of all of the frogs. She loved jumping in the water, swimming down as far as she can go, or going around traveling. And one day, she went to her favorite pebble pile to explore. And while she was there, she found something quite extraordinary. It was unlike any pebble she's seen before. It was white and a little shiny, and it wasn't quite as heavy as a pebble. So Jess Jessica took this back to August and Marilyn. And she said, you guys, look what I found. Look at this strange pebble. And Marilyn, who was very, very wise, said, oh, Jessica, that is not a pebble. That is an egg. And Jessica said, an egg? What do we do with it? And Marilyn said, well, you sit on it, of course. So as Jessica was sitting on this egg, she noticed something began to happen. It started to crinkle and crackle and crack open. And Jessica said, you guys, something's happening to the egg. And out from the egg crawled something green, something scaly. And Jessica said, ah, what is it? And Marilyn said, oh, Jessica, that is a chicken. And Jessica looked at it and said, a chicken? How do you know? And Marilyn said, oh, Jessica, it's a chicken. Trust me, I know things. So Jessica and chicken kind of like to hang out. They both loved swimming in the water. And sometimes even chicken got Jessica out of sticky situations. One time Jessica was swimming and her leg got all tangled in seaweed and Jessica came 
wherein Chicken came to help Jessica. And Jessica and Chicken became best friends, and soon enough, they went everywhere together. And one day, while the two best friends were exploring around the pond, there was a bird cheep, cheep, that came swooping down from one of the trees and said, You! You little one! Your mother has been looking everywhere for you! Uh-oh. Jessica said, Your mom? Oh, no! I hope we didn't scare her by keeping you and exploring for so, for so long. And the bird said, Come with me, little ones, and I will take you to your mom. And so they off they set, and the bird led them straight to someone so magnificent. Jessica had never seen anyone like this. It was, oh, a big, big chicken. And Jessica looked at it, and the big, big chicken said, my little alligator, you come over here. And Chicken went with Mom Chicken. And Jessica said to Mom Chicken, Oh, I'm so sorry for keeping your baby. I really didn't mean to. And the mother said, Oh, no worries. You can play with my sweet little alligator whenever you want. Now, little alligator, let's go home. And the Mom Chicken and the little alligator went together. And Jessica thought for a minute as she looked at them. And her whole way home, she pondered. When she got back to August and Marilyn, she said, you guys, do you wanna know something funny? Chicken's mom thinks he's an alligator. Ha! How silly is that? And the three frogs laughed all day long. The end. Very good listening, you guys. All right, those are all the stories I have for us. But as I'm sure you know, we have some time for some knees up Mother Brown. So I'm going to move this a little bit closer if I can without it falling. Ooh. Perfect. And when our little chicken friend is dancing, you get to jump up and down and dance too. When he's not dancing, you are sitting down, okay? Here we go, we're gonna start with a girl from France. <laughs> there was a girl from France who didn't know how to dance. The only thing that she could do was knees up Mother Brown, oh, knees up Mother Brown, knees up Mother Brown. Knees up, knees up, not let her freeze up. Knees up, Mother Brown. Sit back down. I'm gonna have to readjust a little bit. There we go. Jessica made a really good friend. And it was an alligator in the end. The only other thing that she could do was knees up, Mother Brown. Oh, knees up, Mother Brown. Knees up, Mother Brown. Knees up, knees up, now we're on the up, knees up, Mother Brown. Very good job. The eggs were put to the test to see which chicken was the best. The only other thing that they could do was knees up, Mother Brown. Oh, knees up, Mother Brown. Knees up, Mother Brown. Knees up, knees up, now we're on the threes up, knees up, Mother Brown. Sit back down for our very last one. Here we go. Uh, what is our last one? <laughs> oh, there was a teeny tiny man. Ready? Sorry, it's been a long time, you guys. I said there was a teeny tiny man who loved to do handstands. Oh my gosh. We got a one. Oh, 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 we were so close. We, we had a one leg handstand for a while. The only other thing that he could do was knees up, Mother Brown. Oh, knees up, Mother Brown. Yippee! Knees up, Mother Brown. Woo wee! Knees up, knees up. Not one freeze up. Knees up, Mother Brown. Extra fast! Knees up, Mother Brown. Knees up, Mother Brown. Knees up, knees up. Knees up, knees up. Knees up Mother Brown. Good job, you guys. Thank you so much coming, watching,
watching, listening to my story time. Um, what do I have to tell you? Besides, thank you. Thank you for watching. You guys are fantastic. Uh, be sure if you're not subscribed to subscribe. Uh, tune in every weekday for story times or on Saturday we have the Saturday show with Toby and Otto. All fantastic things. Thank you guys so much to say goodbye. We are going to wiggle wiggle our fingers way up to the sky. Wiggle wiggle fingers. Wait them all goodbye. I hiccup there. Bye everybody. Thanks again for watching.